Hi everyone, a great joy to be with you once again. And we have uh, interesting times ahead, challenging times ahead, as uh, we're entering into this last phase of the lockdown and we're able to start to move around a bit and have fellowship one with another. And we're really looking forward to the days that we'll be able to come together on Sunday to worship God. And just, it's been months and months. And I'm sure that you've missed it as much as I have, just to be in the presence of God and the presence of His people and just to be surrounded by voices and, and have that freedom in our hearts once again. And uh, I know and I realize that there are some challenges and uh, perhaps there's some questions and doubts and uncertainties. But I believe that this is a time that we need to really put our faith and our trust in the Lord and to see what God is wanting to do and what lies ahead of us. So it's a challenging time. It's a good time. So I would like to actually speak on the power of fear. The power of fear. And we're going to turn to Psalm 112, verse 1. And in these few verses, we're going to see that there are two types of fear that we, we read of in Scripture. They may be derivatives of, of fear, but the basic two types of fear. And it needs to be very clear in our understanding what these fears are. So Psalm 112, verse 1, he says, Praise the Lord. Blessed is the man who fears the Lord, who delights greatly in his commandments. Now we'll come on to this later on, but this type of fear is an, a respect, a reverence. It's the type of fear where we're coming before a holy God, a righteous God. We recognize that he is almighty. We recognize that we are his servants, that he is our father. We are his children. And this type of fear brings us to an attitude where we're willing to open our hearts and allow him to speak into our lives and to allow his word to impact us and make a difference. That's why he says we delight greatly in his commandments. We're not arguing with him. We're not disputing. We're not discussing. We have this fear of God. And I believe that, you know, for many biblical scholars, we can, we can read, who read the Bible, study the Greek, study the Hebrew, dissect it, know every, every aspect, or think they know every aspect. But the fact is, without the fear of God, the Word of God has no relevance or bearing in your heart and your life. It just becomes head knowledge. It's like the attitude of a, of a teenage son who thinks he knows better, but he would like your opinion anyway. That's not how we can be with the Lord. To be with God with this fear means we're opening our heart, our heart, mind and our thinking and we're saying, Lord, I think I know this. I may have heard this, but Lord, what are you saying to my heart? What do you want for my life? So he says, praise the Lord. Blessed, happy is the man who fears the Lord. And then he goes on in verse 7 and he says, he will not be afraid of evil tidings. This is the different type of fear. This is the fear of 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 circumstance, of situations, bad news, things that we see, things that we hear. He will not be afraid of evil tidings. Why? Because his heart is steadfast, trusting in the Lord. His heart is established. He will not be afraid. In other words, a man who fears God will have no place for any other type of fear. So these are the two types of fears, and I believe it needs to be very clear in our hearts and our understanding. I, I am discovering more and more whether people have been in the church for a short time or a long time that many people are governed and ruled by fear. And I'm beginning to realize that fear is perhaps the most powerful <laughs> natural, emotional, psychological, spiritual force that is prevalent in our world and society today. It affects everything in different ways. We know just from living in Africa and, and seeing what's happening around us in different countries, even in Eastern Europe and so on, maybe Western Europe, that countries, countries, millions of people can be ruled by fear. One man at the top. We see what Hitler did. We see what Stalin did. We see what even some of the world's current leaders 
are doing to their own people. They have such power over the people and it's simply due to fear. Fear. Fear has enabled men to accomplish extraordinary things. In other words, for fear is what we call that adrenaline, adrenaline rush. People will go, I was watching a, a YouTube clip the other day of somebody who went into the uh, stratosphere and, and, and jumped uh, without a parachute, coming down, landing in a net. I mean, why would people do that? And we say that's that adrenaline rush, but the source of that is fear. People will climb cliffs, they will do the most extraordinary, dangerous, horrific things. Why? Just because they're driven by this fear which produces this, this adrenaline and these different stuff on the inside of them that make, me do, make them do so many crazy things. Fear. Fear. Even in combat, in war, uh, people have done extraordinary things, accomplished ma amazing, thing, amazing things, but it's simply down to fear. That fear grips them, they take hold of the fear and they use it as a force within their lives. Many of them destroy themselves. Fear destroys people. It destroys char the character of man. It destroys marriages. It destroys families. Fear. Fear will mold your character. It shapes your life. People who grow up with, with different types of fear, it, it, it mars them and marks them for their whole life. And they bring that into, into their marriage and they bring that into their family. And this whole attitude of that happened to me when I was young and it's not going to happen to my children. I saw that in my parents and it's not going to happen in my marriage. And, and that fear just drives and motivates them. Fear of failure. Fear of the future. People can't make decisions. They don't want to decide. They're afraid of the future. Fear of sickness. Fear of death. It's amazing. People will... will Christians, I'm not just talking about people in the world, but Christians can be so limited in their, in, their, in their service of God because they're afraid. They're afraid to give because what may happen. They're afraid to serve the Lord because they may find some situation there. Fear of poverty. Fear of the past. Things that we've done in the past that, that we know that God has forgiven us, but some of this fear lurks in our minds. It limits us blocks us god wants us to be free and perhaps the maybe the strongest fear of all is the fear of man and proverbs 29 25 he says the fear of man brings a snare and you know the interesting thing about a snare is that you can't see it the animal doesn't see the snare until he's entrapped and that's what fear does when there, we have this fear of man whoever it is we have this fear of man and we allow this this fear if we're not careful it will it will entrap us and will bring us to a place where we're completely and totally bound we can't serve the lord like that my brothers and sisters we can't there are people who have been in, a, in another church and then they come and uh, they want to serve god and you can feel god working in their heart but somehow they held they bound and when you start to scratch the surface you find that they've been hurt, they've been abused and abused in the past, and now this fear of man just holds them. Marriages destroyed through the fear of man. Young people destroyed through the fear of man. People who don't have the freedom to express themselves, people who don't have the freedom to share because of the fear of man. It becomes a snare. But he says, in Proverbs 29, but whoever trusts in the Lord shall be safe. Isn't that good? Isn't that good news? Shall be safe. And then he says, many seek the ruler's favor, but justice for man comes from the Lord. Isn't that wonderful? Justice for man. Your justification for man comes from the Lord. Your, the righteousness comes from the Lord. Whatever we need comes from him. It does not come from man. So I'm not looking to man for my acceptance. The book of Ephesians chapter 1 says, I'm accepted in the beloved, in Jesus. What Jesus accomplished on the cross for me, he set me free from my past, he set me free from my sin, and I'm now accepted. I don't have to prove myself to any person. 
Why? Because I'm accepted by the Lord. I don't have to serve God with works. I don't have to show what people, what I can do and, and how good I am and, and whatever I, I can accomplish. No, I'm not driven. We're not driven by that anymore. We're not driven by that fear. Why? Because our righteousness, our justice, our, our relationship is with the Lord and the Lord himself. And that's wonderful. So God wants to set us free from fear. And I'm discovering so many Christians and so many people need to understand that it's time, as the Bible says, to rend their heart and not their garments. In other words, let's get down to nitty gritty. What is stopping you in your service of the Lord? What is stopping you in your relationships in the church? What is stopping you in your giving? What is stopping you spending more time in, in the service of the Lord? What is stopping you? Some people say, you know what I need? My family comes first. But God comes first. Your, your finance, your business comes first. No, God comes first. So it's time that God wants to help us to rend our hearts, to open our hearts, to, to break our hearts before Him. And not have a, a superficial work by just rending the garments, tearing the garments. We need to give God access in our hearts to set us free from whatever fear is holding us back. You know, we live in a, in a multicultural, multiracial society, and it's full of fear. Fear of different colors, fear of different people in the church. And these things motivate us. These things manipulate us. And we're in the snare. And as time we sit, seek God and we look to God and we say, I want to be free. I want to be free to do what God wants me to do. No matter where I am, no matter what the situation, no matter what's happening, what's going down in my life, I want to be free. Free from this fear. Maybe people have persecuted you because of your color. Maybe people have, have mocked you because of your language. Whatever the situation, come to God. Come to the Lord and let Him set you free. Realize that it's time for you to walk in this freedom. Realize it's time to, to be free of, the, of the, the snare. Completely free. It's a work of God. And that's what He wants. You know, I believe there are people who have amazing gifts in the church. But where are you? Amazing abilities. But where are you? Well, Brother Peter, you know, I would so love to be involved. But gee, last time I did this, the elder said this or the person said this. What is that? That's the fear. That's just simple old-fashioned fear. And it's time to be free. It's time to be free. And in that freedom, it's not, a, as the Bible says, it's not an occasion for the flesh. It's not an occasion for your pride. It's not the opportunity for you to rise up in your own strength. No, but it's with this broken heart that we come, we serve the Lord, we serve one another freely. Freely. We can't live in fear. We can't live in the fear of man. We can't live in the fear of the past. We can't live in the fear of failure. We can't live in the fear of what may happen or what's going on. We can't. God has called you to serve Him in freedom. Freedom. That's why Jesus came. To set you free. This fear needs to go. So we need to see, we need to discern in our lives what is motivating us, what is discerning us, uh, not discerning, what is driving us, what is pushing us. We need to see this. We need to recognize, we need to come and say, Lord, why am I holding back? Why am I not involved? Why am I, you know, I, I, I'm, I don't want to speak to that one, but I'm happy to speak to this one. Why am I like that? You need to see the fear. I'm not, I'm not criticizing you. I'm not putting you in a box. No, no, no. I want the light to shine in your heart and life. I want you to come to a place where you're free from this. Where you can talk to anybody. Where you can do whatever God wants you to do. Free. It's amazing. I remember years ago when we, when we first got married, we were, living, we were living in Johannesburg. In a little, little apartment in the center of Joburg. And uh, 
it was so noisy with the traffic and the people and my, Jane and I, we decided we're going to get a canary, a little canary. So we went and went to the pet shop and we got a canary who was a, a funny looking bird and we called him Rusty, I'll never forget. And he was in this little cage. And one day I looked at him and I thought, you, it's tough for this little bird to sit in the cage. So I closed the curtains so that he wouldn't fly into the glass and I shut the door and I opened it. The, the cage and I sat back there. There was nobody else in the room and I just gave him the space. Hmm. Do you think he would come out of that cage? No. No, 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 no. I put seed on the outside. He just he stretched his neck. But do you think he would come out of the cage? No. Why? He was so used to it. He was accustomed to it. It had become almost his refuge, his place of safety. And that is what fear becomes. We think it's a place of safety. We have walls between us and other people. Walls between us and what God is calling us and wanting us to do. And we, we limit ourselves and we walk with these inhibitions and these fears. But let me tell you, it's not a place of safety. It's not a refuge. It's not a fortress for you. No, no, no. It's a snare. You're bound. And God wants to set you free. God wants to cut those cords so that you can be the man, the woman that God wants you to be in freedom. That's the good news. It's time to come out of the cage. Time to fly. Time to enjoy the freedom that God has brought to you through Christ Jesus. We are called to be free from fear. But where does it start? Where does it start? But I think it's something that we must, we must clearly, clearly understand. And I'm going to say this a few times, that what we fear is what we obey. What we fear is what we obey. In other words, what motivates me, what is the boss of my life, is my fear. Either the fear of God or the fear that is from the, the natural things, the emotional things, what has happened in the past and all these things we, we've been talking about. What motivates you? Who's the boss? Who's the Lord of your life? What you fear the most is what you obey. So Deuteronomy chapter 10, he says, And now Israel, what does the Lord your God require of you? This is verse 12. But to fear the Lord your God, to walk in all his ways, to love him, to serve the Lord your God with all of your heart and with all your soul, and to keep the commandments and statutes of the Lord, which I am commanding you today for your good. Huh? That was the call of God to Israel. What is God saying to you, the people of Israel? They were in the wilderness. They were surrounded by enemy nations. In many ways, they were helpless. They were not trained as warriors. There was no uh, natural provision for them in the wilderness. They were, diff they, were, they were lost in that sense. But God was there. And all God required of them was to fear Him, to look to Him, to put their trust completely in Him, to walk after Him, to love Him and to serve Him, to make Him the Lord of their life. That was for Israel, and so it is for us, it needs to be for us. Matthew 10 verse 28, Jesus said, Do not fear those who kill the body, but cannot kill the soul. Rather fear him who can destroy both soul and body in hell. He was challenging the people, challenging the Pharisees of the day. Don't look at the natural things and be afraid of that. We have a great God. We have an almighty God. We have a God who's, who sent his only beloved son for us, for you, for me, because he loves us. And our fear is towards him. Our fear is to put him first in our life and say, Lord, I've been bound by this fear of man, bound by this fear of, of that person, that brother or that sister, bound by the fear of, of the sickness or, or by finance. But Lord, I want to put you first in the life. What are these other things? I'm not answerable to these other things. I'm answerable to you, Lord. I say this often. We have only one life. 
We don't have two. We've only got one shot, my brothers and sisters. You're not going to die and come back again. You've got one shot. Live your life for Jesus. Make him the Lord of your life. Let him be the boss. Have a fear in your heart towards him. A reverence. Open your heart. Don't, don't subject yourself and submit to, to the fears that, that in the natural. The emotional fears. Your psychological fears. Don't submit to those. Put God first. Put God first. I know many people who have been healed and restored in miraculous ways. They've faced all sorts of horrendous situation, whether it's mental or physical or whatever. But when they put God first, when they open their heart and say, Lord, I'm coming to you, set me free from this fear. God does it. God does it. Does it. We open the door, God comes in. Man, that's fantastic. And we're free to serve him. Free to walk with him. Matthew 5, he says, make peace with your adversary. Make peace. Don't be afraid of your adversary. Whatever the adversary is, it may be a sickness. It may be a, 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 a situation in your life. It may be that. Make peace. Say, Lord, I, I can't change this. Lord, I, I have to take medication for this. Or Lord, I, I, I'm married to this person. There's nothing I can do. Make peace. But don't let fear rule your life. Don't let fear rob you, ensnare you. But rather come bring your heart and your life to the Lord and say, Lord, I put you first. When the, the apostles were challenged by the Sanhedrin and the religious leaders of that day, these men had the power to destroy them, to kill the apostles, to destroy the children of God. And the apostles were preaching the gospel. They were preaching the risen Christ. And Peter says in Acts chapter 5, we must obey God rather than men. The attitude was we need to have a fear in our heart towards the Lord and not a fear in our heart towards man. We need to be free to do what God wants us to do. Now you know, we know, when you read the scriptures, the whole world was against the early church. The Romans were against them. The, the, the Hebrews were against them. Everybody was against them. And in the midst of that, there was a determination. We're not going to be afraid of that. We're not going to allow the fear of these things to dominate our life. But we're going to have a fear towards God. I, I trust you're hearing my heart this morning. I trust you're hearing my heart. I, I don't think there are many people that I have ever met somewhere who do not have an insecurity of some sort in their life. I don't think so. I, I've met many people for years. I've met different people. And you meet people who are big, who are strong. But you scratch a little bit, you will find insecurity. You will find a fear. You will find something there. It speaks to all of us. There's no levels. Let me tell you. There's no levels. We can't say he's full of fear. He has a little bit of fear. No, fear is fear. Where there's a fear of man, where there's fear of circumstance, fear of the situation, you're ensnared. You're ensnared. But God wants to set us free. We live in a world where this fear builds an atmosphere of ungodliness and unrighteousness. That's what Paul found when he wrote in Romans chapter 3 verse 10. He says, there is none righteous, no, not one. There is none who understands. There is none who seeks after God. They have all turned aside. They have come together and they are unprofitable. There is none who does good. No, not one. And then he goes on in verse 18 and he says, Our chief sin in this world, in this situation, is there is no fear of God. There's no fear of God. Now I know he's speaking to a godless society. But let me tell you. When I read these verses I feel this morning that he's speaking to the church. He's speaking to us. Our chief sin is there's no fear of God. 
The reason why we hide attitudes and we hide issues in our hearts, the reason why we struggle with, with what God wants to bring in our life is because we have no fear towards God. We're religious. We're traditional. We go to church. We go to meetings. We, we watch. We go to Zoom. We're online and this. But there's no fear of God. People are bound by their natural fears. But fear of God is this heart where we're crying to the Lord, looking to God, and we're saying, God, I need to serve you in freedom. I need to serve you in peace. I need to serve you in victory. I'm not speaking to one or two people here. I'm speaking to many. I'm speaking to myself. To have this freedom because of the fear of God. God is the one who has called me. God is the one who has begun the work. God is the one that has a plan, a purpose for my life. I believe that when there's a fear of God, we will experience what he has for us in a great way. Acts 2, it says in verse 43, fear came upon every soul, the fear of God, and many wonders and signs were done through the apostles. It wasn't, it wasn't the ministry of the apostles. That wasn't the key. No, no, no. The key was the fear of God in the church. The fear of God in the church. And I wonder today why we don't have the signs and the wonders and the miracles. We have the apostolic ministry. We have uh, men, uh, people who have walked in gifts of healings that God has used. But why don't we see the signs and the wonders in the church today? I believe it's because the church has lost its fear. We listen to the teaching of man. We follow the precepts and the principles of man. But what about the fear of God? This attitude of heart where God has access. This attitude of heart where God is able to, to break through and, and to put his finger and say, Peter, enough is enough. You can't continue doing that. Peter, there's, there's this. Uh, sister, there's this. My daughter, there's that. You need to put me first. And we're praying and saying, oh, God, heal. God, do this. God, do that. But no, the fear of God needs to take our hearts again. Restore us in that relationship with Him where the doors are open and God is able to manifest Himself in all His power and all His glory. We need to put Him first in everything. We need to honor Him. We need to please Him. We need to have this desire no matter where we are, whether it's in our conversation, whether it's in, in who we're talking to or watching or listening or reading. That we're putting God first. Deuteronomy 6 verse 4. He says. Hear O Israel. The Lord our God. The Lord is one. You shall love the Lord your God. With all of your heart. All of your soul. And all of your strength. And these words which I command you today. Shall be in your heart. You shall teach them diligently to your children. And shall talk of them. When you sit in your house. When you walk by the way, when you lie down, when you rise up, you shall bind them as a sign on your hand, and they shall be as frontlets before between your eyes. You shall write them on the doorposts of your house and on your gates. That was God's desire for his people. And what did his people do? What do we do? We religiousize everything. <laughs> yeah. You go to house, homes. I've been to homes where people are smoking and drinking and there's, there's immoral behavior. And I see a, a, a picture on the wall which says Christ is the unseen guest at this table or whatever. You know what I'm talking about. What is that? That's just religious. That's just, it, it, what does it mean to God? It's hypocrisy. Why? Because God is looking for people who will put him first, who will fear him. In every aspect of life, with their children, when they're walking, when they're talking, when they're in the house, when they're sitting down, when they're rising up, in everything they do, they bring honor and glory and praise, and worship to God, fearing Him. I believe that when we fear God, it becomes our protection. We fear God, it becomes our protection. That's why 1 John chapter 4, verse 18, he says, there is no fear in love. 
But perfect love casts out fear. Because fear involves torment. Huh? Fear involves torment. But he who fears has not been made perfect in love. We love him because he first loved us. Love towards God. That perfect love. That love that is given. That love that puts him first. That love that gives honor and praise to him. In, our, in every aspect. You cannot separate that love from the fear of God. That love will drive out the other fear that brings torment. This love will bring the peace of God. It will bring your walk with God. It will bring a wholesomeness in your life with God. Righteousness with God. Hmm. It becomes our protection. 2 Corinthians 7 verse 1, he says, There's no fear in love. But perfect love casts out fear. Sorry, that's, that's the wrong scripture. 2 Corinthians 7 verse 1. Let me just get that. Two Corinthians seven. Where are we? There we go. Sorry for that. He says, therefore, having these promises, beloved, let us cleanse ourselves from all the filthiness of the flesh and spirit, perfecting holiness in the fear of the Lord. Huh? That's why I'm saying the fear of the Lord will protect ourselves will protect us. So he says we're perfecting holiness. We're cleansing ourselves. It's not a religious duty. It's not something we have to do. It's not something I'm covering up. I'm not being a hypocrite. But no. In fear of God, I'm determined to walk in righteousness. Determined to walk without sin. Determined to walk in a way that pleases God in everything. And because of that, it protects me. It protects me from temptation. It protects me from, from the enemy. It protects me from, from being distracted by all the immoral and unclean things of this world. The fear of God. And I walk in clean, being cleansed. And I walk in purity. And I walk in holiness. It protects me. The fear of God will protect us in our relationships. Ephesians 5 verse 21. He says we submit to one another in the fear of God. You don't submit because of my title or my position or because I'm the husband or the elder. No. You submit in the fear of God to one another. There's nothing carnal about that. There's nothing natural or emotional in that sense. I am submitting myself to God. And because I'm in submission to God, I'm in submission to you. No matter who you are, no matter where you are. I can hear you, receive from you, be blessed by you. My protection is my fear of God. So people who are in the church and they, they, they're looking at the leadership and they're judging the leadership and they, you know, they're sort of checking the leadership out and saying, well, I don't know if I'm quite ready to really submit to the leadership. What is that? That's based on the fear of man. That's based on something that perhaps has happened in the past. But when there's a fear of God, you know you need to submit. And it brings a desire to submit. And it becomes your protection. Nobody can abuse you. Nobody can misuse you or whatever if you are in fear of God. Because God will lead you. God will be your protection. God will be there for you. This is the fear that he wants to bring back to our hearts. Bring back to our lives. And it's so important. I believe that we're, we're li living in, in times that are very challenging. And these last few months, we, we've had this COVID virus and it's still out there and it's, we don't know what's going to happen. And, and there's so many uncertainties. People who have lost their homes, their businesses. It's affected marriages. It's affected many things. Many things. And I was reminded in Luke 21, where Jesus said from verse 25, And there will be signs in the sun, in the moon, in the stars, and on the earth, distress of nations with perplexity, 
the sea and the waves roaring, men's hearts failing them from fear, and the expectation of those which are coming on the earth, for the powers of the heavens will be shaken. Then they will see the Son of Man coming in a cloud with power and grace and glory. Now when these things happen, look up, lift up your heads, because your redemption draws near. Huh? All these things that we're seeing in the world today, the earthquakes, the famines, the wars, the disease, the pestilence, all of these things, all of this perplexity, as he says, all this distress, where are we? In the midst of that, we need to walk, not with fear of these things, but with the fear of God. You see, that fear of God says, Lord, you are in control. Lord, this is part of your plan. Lord, this is what you're going to do. The fear of God puts me in the right place. It brings a peace in my heart and life. It brings an assurance to my heart. It becomes my protection. And I, I want to tell you, we have been through a, a challenging time, all of us, in these last few months. But I believe there's more to come. There will be wave after wave of situation in one nation after another. There will be more distress. There will be more calamity. I'm not prophesying. I'm quoting. That's what God has told us. Now, whether we are at the beginning of tribulation, whether we're in the middle of tribulation, I'm not getting involved in that. But one thing I know, there's room for you and I to walk in fear. There will be opportunity. To walk in fear. The fear of all these things. The fear of the unknown. And it will be a snare. It will be a trap. It can destroy the faith of many. It will bring many dis to distraction. and Bring many to the wayside. But you and I, we need to have a resolve in our hearts. And that's what my challenge is this morning. All of us. You may be sitting there and saying, well, I don't have the fear of anything. I, you know, I, I don't believe that. I'm talking to me. I'm talking to anybody, everybody. If you, if you just look and you say, Lord, show me this morning. I believe he will. If you're willing to rend your heart, he will show you the fear. He will show you where you're ensnared. Now's the time with all honesty, with all sincerity to be able to come to the Lord and say, Lord, I can go no further. I want you to be the Lord of my life in every aspect. I don't want to have a fear in anything, of anything. Don't hold on. Don't keep something in a closet. But come to the Lord this morning. He's not there to condemn. He's not there to, to judge us or to put us down. He's not there for that. He just simply wants us to realize that now is the time for freedom. No matter what your situation, maybe you have a, a mountain of debt. Maybe you have a, a, a marriage in crisis. Maybe you're suffering physically or mentally. Whatever the situation, whatever is going on, I implore you this morning to turn your heart and your life to the Lord and say, Lord, I want to open the door. Forgive me. Forgive me, Lord, for holding on to these things. Forgive me, Lord, for allowing so much of the world and its thinking and attitudes and mentality in my life. Forgive me, Lord, for, for allowing myself to be ensnared by fear. I want to be free. I implore you this morning, as we pray together, I implore you to come and to say, Lord, set me free. And we will pray together for a new fear to come in your heart, a fear of the Lord, a fear of God, that you are able to put him first in every situation. You're able to bring him into that and allow his wisdom and allow his peace and allow whatever he has for you to manifest to your heart and to your life. I implore you this morning. It's time to be free from this fear. I want to go back to the scripture we read in Psalm 112, where he says, 
Blessed is the man who fears the Lord. Happy is the man who fears the Lord, who delights greatly in his commandments. He will not be afraid of bad news. His heart is steadfast. He is a man who is trusting the Lord. His heart is established. He will not be afraid. Open the door to the Lord this morning. Doesn't matter who you are. You may have been in the church for 120 years. Open your heart. You may be new. You may, you may be hiding things, whatever. Open your heart this morning and allow this attitude to come in where you're saying, Lord, I really want to walk in fear towards you with this respect, with this honor to please you in everything, my thinking, my words, everything, so that I can walk free from fear. I'm coming to you, Lord, that you will cut the snare. You will break the power of that snare in my life once and for all. Once and for all. Some of you have walked in it for years. And you come so far and then something happens and you draw back. Because you're, you're held by that snare. But this morning, the Lord can cut it. Come to Him. And ask Him for a miracle in your life. Let's pray together this morning. Father, we thank You that Your Word is clear. We thank you, Father, that you have called us. You have a plan and a purpose for each and every one of us. And Lord, it's our desire to walk in freedom. Freedom from the fear of man. Freedom from, from any type of fear, whether it's in sickness, to, to poverty, to situation, to the past, the future. To be free of this, Lord. 100% free. And we want to come to you this morning. And we want to open our hearts to you, Lord. We want to allow your word to have access to our hearts and to our lives. Day by day. That we will walk with you, talk with you, worship you. And most of all, Lord, we will put you first. And we will walk a life that is pleasing. A life that brings honor to you. Because we fear you, Lord. We fear you. We fear your righteousness, your holiness, your majestic, you are almighty. And Lord, we want to bow our hearts and knees before you. And Father, I pray for my brothers and sisters. I pray for everyone that is listening this morning. That you would intervene. That by the Holy Spirit, you would show them clearly where they're bound and what their fear is. And that you would show them your love and you would show them your grace. And Father, you would reach down and you would cut that cord, that snare, and that you would break its power over their heart and their mind and their body and their being today. That from this moment, Lord, freedom would come and there would be no more the fear of man and no more the fear of the circumstance, but rather there would be a fear of God in their hearts as they learn to walk in freedom day by day. This is my prayer. And Lord, I believe for great miracles. And as fear comes upon our heart, Lord, the right fear, we will see the signs and the wonders and the almighty working of God once again. We give you the thanks and the praise in Jesus' precious name. Amen and amen. Before I go, I want to say that if the Lord has spoken to you, and we have prayed with me this morning, and if you still feel you, you would like to pray, then call an elder, call somebody that you can look to and you can pray together with. Don't just let this be a message. Don't let this just be a something of the moment. But if you feel you want to go one step further, then I, I ask you, get in touch. Let's pray. Let's believe that God can set you free from the snares and that you can walk with his heart turned to God each and every day. May God truly bless you.